Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, dear customers, brand owners, and any other interested parties. I'm really excited and happy to welcome you here today. We are going to have a look at how we can all take positive climate action with sustainable packaging. I'm sure that in light of the ongoing COVID-19 crisis, we are even more aware of the, of the increasing pressure to take positive climate action. Sustainability used to be an expert topic that mostly scientists and some, should we call them, environmental nerds would talk about. Not anymore today. We can't afford to not be, uh, know anything about it. This has truly changed in the past years when um, sustainability has risen to the forefront of everyday business in all of our companies. And now we're here today to work together to enable you to speak sustainability. We are here to support you on your journey. And we in that case, that is my lovely colleague Bob and I, and we will share insight on climate action for you. We will enable you to talk about climate change and we will also even more enable you to take really concrete positive climate action in your business. And now let's have a quick look at the agenda. We will start off by having a brief look at UPM Raflatag and the foundation of sustainability in our business. And then we can share more details on the climate crisis as a global challenge that it is for all of us personally, but also all of us in our businesses as well. In the main part, Bob and I will then talk about possibilities to take positive climate action with the packaging choices that you make. After about 40 to 45 minutes, we will have sufficient time left for Q&A and we'll be very happy to answer the questions that you have still open. Administratively, we are recording this session and we will be sharing the link afterwards. There will also be a few weeks down the road, uh, versions available with uh, language subtitles. And now, let me start you off with a short video. At UPM Raflatac, we are labeling a smarter future. Wrapped around your favorite brands, our products tell stories that help shape everyday life. To make progress and provide better choices, we are taking a leading role in sustainable labeling. But not through a one-dimensional point of view, Rather, a 360 approach to sustainable packaging solutions in everything we do, from responsible sourcing to manufacturing, services, and design. As part of UPM, we are committed to our vision of creating new, renewable materials beyond fossils. To optimize our global operations and minimize negative environmental impact, we are guided by three words, reduce, recycle, and renew. We embrace the circular economy and have signed the Global Plastic Pack Commitment led by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. And we are innovating for sustainable packaging solutions that help our partners go beyond their own targets and ambitions. In the world of packaging, labels matter. And by being a front-runner company in sustainable labeling, we aim to drive our industry into a smarter future. Welcome to join us on our journey. Happy to continue the journey together with you today. Before I turn to Bob with more in-depth questions, let's have a brief look at UPM Rafflatag. Today we have been, um, today we are working with about 3,000 people all over the globe to deliver sustainable solutions to you. We've been doing that and leading in sustainable labeling for more than 40 years across all of our 13 end use segments. And now there's no one better actually to tell you about the history of sustainable labeling at UPN Raflatag as Bob. So Bob, over to you. Could you share how we came on this journey? Hi, good morning Vera and good morning to everybody else who's uh, joining us online today. It's great to be with you here to, do, to discuss the, the climate crisis and the positive actions that we can take to help mitigate climate change. And uh, this journey, of course, of uh, RAF attack over the last 40 years has you know, really had sustainability in its backbone and uh, climate has been, of course, uh, very much part of that the last 10 years. And you know, the, the inspiration for all of this really came from our uh, founding father, Mr. Johannes Thrombury, 
who was the who was a chemist, and uh, you know he set out first of all to answer the question is that could he find an alternative to to solvent based adhesives, and uh, his enthusiasm you know has been an inspiration for generations of RAF attackers. Uh, you know, and making sure that uh, sustainability is part of our everyday business, uh, not just for the last 40 years, but for the, for the 40 years going forward. Sounds good. Thanks, Bob. I know that um, it's not just Rafa Duck that had a long journey in sustainability, but it's also yourself. So can you share a little bit on your own journey of sustainability and sustainable labeling? Sure, sure. Well, you can hear from my accent, I'm a, a Scotsman. And uh, I started off my career as a forester in the Highlands of Scotland. Um, so I've been with UPM now 25 years, and uh, 20 of you those, however, have been living here in Finland. And uh, sustainability has always been part of my my role, and it's been a great privilege to have been part of Raffa Tax sustainability journey for the last 10 years. Thank you. So when we come to Raffa Tax nowadays, how would you describe the Raffa Tax approach to sustainability today? Good question. And, uh, you know, this is a really fundamental uh, thing because uh, we have a so-called 360 degree approach. And uh, in practice, what that means is that we are integrating sustainability to our business strategy. We don't have a separate uh, sustainability strategy or a separate approach. The fact is that it's built into to every part of our journey. So whether we th take the whole sustainability agenda or climate as such, we build it into every part from you know responsible sourcing uh, through the operations in the factories and our distribution terminals to how we organize our, our logistics and supply chain and of course to the products that we put out on the market uh, but also the services and how, how, how we can support customers and brands uh, tackle climate and the bigger sustainability agenda. Um, but also, you know, social responsibility is a big part of how we, we work. We've got 3,000 people that you, you mentioned earlier. And, uh, you know, taking care of them, whether it's health and safety or training opportunities for the future, but also thinking then about the communities where, where our people are living and working is also very important for us. But maybe the most important of all is collaboration. You know, we won't tackle the climate crisis or other sustainability topics on our own. You know, we, we are part of the... The, the packaging supply chain, the value chain, and we have to work with suppliers, customers, the brands, and anybody else who's involved to, to, make, this, to make this happen. Collaboration is really important. Thanks for the explanation, Bob. And I think it's fair to sum up that sustainability is not just something that we also do, but it actually is how we do everything in our business. Absolutely. And, uh, now, now let's focus a bit more on the topic of today, the current climate crisis that we're in and how we can take sustainable action in light of this. So the ongoing crisis is actually worsening when you look at global mega trends like population growth, increasing consumption and resource scarcity. And then you see a couple of pictures here. So we have melting glaciers, we have um, then additionally also plastic pollution, wildfires, floods, droughts. So they all have resulted nowadays in increased environmental uh, pressure and increased increased uh, concerns about the environment and it drives us as rough attack solutions and we also see um, ever increasing regulation from governments all over the world to put pressure on businesses to take sustainable action but then when we look at the crisis and more more in depth that how does that affect packaging today and who are the interested parties when it comes to climate topics yeah that's a really good question and uh, i think for all of us online who are involved in packaging know that packaging has really been in the, in the focus over the last few years and it's getting increasingly so. Uh, partly driven, of course, by consumers and consumer concern over climate and other sustainability topics. And this study that you can see on the slide here has shown that 79% uh, of consumers say that they consider you know, sustainable packaging in their purchases and decisions. So where they're putting their money has a real influence on what the brands are doing. And you start to see that through the fact that some of the bigger brands are actually purchasing smaller sub-brands. You know, Unilever have bought uh, seventh generation SC Johnson with Ecover. And, um, you know, I think also yesterday I saw in the news that uh, Unilever had just made a, a massive commitment to exclude fossil-based carbon from their home care product range by 2030. So these are all signals that the brands are responding to consumer and society concern. 
Um, but it's not just them, you know, I think there's also the fact that we have um, uh, investors really thinking about sustainability. And uh, the, the, the example on the screen is BlackRock, who's one of the biggest investment funds in the world. And by the way, they just happen to be one of UPM's biggest shareholders, but they have real got, really got sustainability in their focus. And uh, there's two things about that. You know, they're, they're obviously thinking about sustainability from a profit and a returns. You know, that's where the growth is going to be. That's why the brands are acting the way they are in terms of putting more and more sustainability marketing and products on the on, on the market. But then actually most important for them is it's risk averse. It's uh, about taking a risk approach to, to investing. And, you know, if I was a, a CEO or a CFO or a director, a member of a management team, you know, I would absolutely be failing in my duty to shareholders if I was not taking the climate crisis seriously and taking actions, you know, that would positively impact on that and going forward. So I think the imperative is clearly there. Okay, impressive. So across the value chain, we see that all actors are actually engaging and taking action already today or actually looking for how to take action. Um, so that could mean that on the day-to-day, -day, probably also for you in the sustainability team, that might change a lot. So how does the day-to-day -day look like in Europe and across the globe now? That's a great question. And Vera, you're part of a, a sustainability team that's tackling these every day. You know, we see uh, despite, you know, COVID and despite the recession, you know, actually an increasing number of requests for help on sustainability topics you know, from customers and brands down the line. And uh, that comes through, not just in the number of inquiries, but the very concrete, concrete requests that we get for carbon footprints, product footprint data. And if we just take uh, our label life service, which you see on the screen in front of you, that's a service where we can deliver, for example, tailored LCA calculations, depending on the packaging type. And, you know, historically we've run between 50 and 100 a year. Already this year, we look like we're going to be more than 250. So that's just an example of concrete evidence which shows that, you know, climate and the crisis that we face is really high on the agenda. Yeah, very well. So if we now take a step back and we look at the mess that we humans created, right? there actually is no planet B and we need to take positive climate action now. And that's Absolutely. basically a call to all of you listening today to make sure that take action now before it is actually too late. And uh, it does make good business sense, as Bob made the point before. But uh, climate crisis or climate change is not just an, such an easy topic. It looks on the surface like it, but uh, Bob, do you have any way to put in a nutshell what climate change and climate crisis is about? <laughs> I don't think I can put it in a nutshell very easily, but I'll try my best. Uh, it's a very complex topic. Uh, but you can see in the graph in front of you the, the something that we probably all realize and understand and know, but there's been a massive growth in fossil carbon emissions during the industrial era. And that has resulted in a situation where, if I remember rightly, back in uh, May this year, there were 417 parts per million carbon in the atmosphere. And that is something that hasn't existed on this planet for three million years. So whether you believe climate change or not, that will have a consequence. That's just a fact. And that is the reason why we have this crisis facing us, and it's an immediate crisis. It's why, you know, governments and uh, from all over the world came together to uh, commit to the Paris Climate Change Agreement, which is really focused on taking action now to try to keep the, the increase in temperature below two degrees and, if possible, head towards 1.5 degrees warmer. So limiting it to that level is going to be really important, but it means taking action right now. And, um, you know, UPM has committed also now to, to stick to this 1.5 and has taken many, many strong actions to uh, to do our part in this game, but it's a, it's it's something that we all have to do. Yeah, absolutely. So to become more concrete, how does that translate to sustainable packaging and sustainable labeling specifically? What can we do about it? Well, um, I think there uh, there are three focus areas for us as a as a company, and this is something that you know we have developed into is what we call our three R approach. And the idea first, of course, is that, you know, you can reduce the amount of raw materials that we're putting into the labels that are going onto the packaging. Same with packaging. You reduce your raw materials, 
by default you're almost reducing your carbon footprint by the same amount. So if you reduce raw materials by 10-15% you have a very similar reduction in carbon footprint. The second thing is to keep your raw materials in the circular system. So you know with labels you know it's key for us to enable recyclability but it's also really important that you know we make products now with recycled content and that is then also ensuring that you're not burdening the planet with more fossil carbon emissions uh, if, you know when we take new raw materials so-called virgin raw materials and then the third thing is the one that really excites me and uh, lots of colleagues in UPM is the fact that you know nowadays uh, technology chemistry is allowing us to replace those uh, fossil based raw materials with renewables and I think there's massive potential in that and that's something that we're looking at very 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 strongly basically to sum up in three words like it was shown already in the video in the beginning it's reduce recycle renew which is our approach to put together that actually in a nutshell on three hours yes um, and then so there are quite a few things that actually our printer customers and also brand owners can do and today we'll have a look at a bit more in depth into the smart choice part of the portfolio with the re uh, reduce and renew part and Smart Circle will be covered in the webinar, more on that in the end. But Bob, could you give us a couple of um, concrete examples on product-wise? What does that mean and how, how does that mean positive climate action? Yeah, sure, sure indeed. Um, let's start with um, our Rafnext Plus range. This is a, a paper range which has you know three very concrete actions which um, uh, help mitigate climate change and the first one of course when you think about this paper label on this package first thing you need to know is where is the wood fiber in this paper label coming from you need to know the origin of wood you also need to then make sure that that forest is being sustainably managed and you know there's verifications through FSC or uh, PFC how to do that uh, and the idea by doing that is you can ensure that that, car, that forest has been managed as a carbon sink. So that's the first positive action you can take to mitigate climate change. The second one is to actually, as we already mentioned, reduce the amount of raw material. So when you have a thinner, lighter uh, paper material, you're also reducing the amount of wood fibre you need. So you're therefore reducing the pressure on natural resources. And of course, when you do all that, you're able to then reduce your carbon footprint. And of course, by doing that, you're also helping mitigate climate change. Okay, thanks for that. It does sure sound like positive climate action. Now, what I'm wondering, looking at the whole market, we're not the only company out there. Don't all papers with the same grammage have that same advantage? Or can you elaborate a bit more on uh, what is the uniqueness of this product specifically for European Ruffler Attack? Sure, uh, and I think Rafnex Plus really is unique. It uh, has something that no other uh, paper label has and that is that we can actually quantify quite accurately that positive climate action that you're taking in terms of uh, kilograms carbon and uh, what you see on the screen in front of you are figures which depict on the top if you, if you see the green line there if you look at the number above the green line that's the reduction of fossil carbon emissions uh, that's coming from making that positive choice and what's really unique, nobody's ever done this before, is we've calculated also the bit below the line, which is actually how you're increasing the capacity of the forest to mitigate climate change. And by having those two figures, um, you know, we only managed to do it after two or three years of very hard work and uh, collaboration actually with the Carbon Trust. And Carbon Trust is the, you know, it's, it's one of the leading uh, verifying bodies in, in carbon uh, calculations in the world uh, but that model you know is then verified and we can then use that information to convey and give to printers or end users through this kind of diploma that you can see uh, so that's the verification of your performance improvement and that's that's really unique that's uh, something you can't get anywhere else and the great thing about it is you can't just have the diploma, but you can then use that data to tell your own story going forward. Have you got an example already where you use that diploma? So how do you hand that out? 
Well, uh, I think that's the, there's a great example here from our, our dear colleagues Savi and Sergio in, in Spain and Portugal with uh, uh, our customer Mofitex. And the idea is that uh, they now have a very clear calculation, which is credible, it's verified by Carbon Trust, and it tells them, like I said, the quantified performance improvement in terms of mitigating climate change. That's really valuable information. And of course, then they can use that for marketing, branding purposes, or actually passing forward to their customers. So this is how you can also have credible data moving through through the value chain. Very important. Okay, so it's a great it's a great vivid example. So it's how printer customers can also engage then their brand owners because that's a benefit, of course, that they create together by choosing that label. Yes, indeed. Then we do have papers covered with this Roughnex Plus, which relates to all of our standard papers. Um, what about sustainable films? Well, that's even more exciting because that's the thing I've been dreaming about for <laughs> as a forester for many years. And, uh, you know, it's really starting to come alive. And the idea here is that if you're replacing fossil based raw materials, which are essentially coming from a hole in the ground, a black hole, you know, you're replacing that with something that's coming from well, in our case, the, the sustainably managed forest, something green and uh, has all the other ecosystem sourcing, uh, ecosystem service benefits attached to it. So I think if we can do that and have carbon that's coming out of the uh, so-called natural carbon cycle, then that's uh, as a raw material, then that's, uh, that's the way to go. And this is exactly what Unilever announced yesterday that they want to do. That's great. And in the concrete product examples, do we have this label used anywhere already? Yes, we do. And again, I have a couple of examples here. This is a, uh, a very beautiful uh, Velamo water bottle. And uh, that, this is a, a good example where you have the very first uh, wooden plastic label on a, on a package. And uh, this is based on uh, so-called bioavernus of the NAFTA, which is a residue of the pulping process in, in UPM. And we've then taken that forward and, and converted that back into the, the, the plastic film that you see on the bottle today. And the great thing about that is that we know it comes from a sustainably managed forest, the raw material. And we've been able to verify that also with a chain of custody through ISCC. And the other thing that we can verify is that the raw material source is not competing as a land use with food, for example, and that's also really important. Well, that's definitely great facts already. And then, I mean, I, I actually studied business at the beginning of uh, when I went after school, basically. So I get always excited about figures behind that as well. So <laughs> do we have something really concrete like we have on the Roughnecks Plus? Yeah, we do. And I, I know you're a figures person, so that's why we have some figures in the in the presentation today but just think about it that if you choose this kind of wood origin plastic filmic label to your package you can reduce your fossil carbon emissions by 66 percent now that's really significant and uh, you know why would you not choose that as an option you know if you have it so uh, those kind of opportunities are now there on the market and uh, we need to have more and more of these going forward. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. And 66% uh, savings for greenhouse gas emissions, it's actually quite impressive. Um, but I want to go to another point that with Roughnex Plus, you mentioned Carbon Trust, and now with Forest Film, you mentioned ISCC. So uh, why are you working with t these types of organizations? It takes us back to exactly the topic that uh, I mentioned in the beginning about our sustainability approach. Collaborations, third party verifications, you know, this is how we ensure uh, that the performance is as good as it can be. Collaborations are really important for us, uh, you know, and it's not just with, uh, uh, with uh, ISCC or Carbon Trust, but, you know, we, we've already made commitments through the Ellen MacArthur Foundation to the Global Plastic Pact. We work with environmental organizations like WWF. We have a fantastic project. Uh, in Poland, which is uh, focused originally on rivers, but is now very much focusing on circular economy. And then mitigating climate change is part of that is going to be uh, something that we focus on going forward. But also the Association of Plastic Recyclers in the US. Uh, so there's lots of ways that we can collaborate. Uh, 
and especially, you know, you know, we want to collaborate with our customers and uh, the brands going forward to help them find the solutions that we need to make uh, packaging more sustainable and address this climate crisis going forward. Okay, great to hear. And then I agree, I mean, collaboration across the value chain really is key, which is one yeah. of the reasons also why we have this webinar today to really make sure that we can collaborate better, share information and share insights that, that we already gained as well down the value chain. Absolutely. So. Um, then one question, uh, a, a bit away, now I'm coming back to figures again, but um, in the end, there's one question that we're being asked quite a bit, and I think salespeople in Rafa uh, get asked that a lot from brands and from customers. This all sounds sounds great, and there's a lot of effort going into this. How much does it cost? <laughs> That's a great question, and uh, I've been asked that question over 20 years, and uh, I always start the answer saying this, that you know, there's a reason a clear reason why unsustainable products are cheap or cheaper. You know, they don't have uh, responsible sourcing. You know, they can source from anywhere. They don't have to focus on sustainably managed forests, which costs money to do. You know, it's, uh, you know, certificates cost money, audits cost money, management systems cost money, employing experts, sustainability experts cost money. Uh, but that's an investment that you make to be able to deliver you know, credibly uh, sustainable uh, products to the market. And, uh, you know, I, I then also want to come back, you know, because my answer always says as well that if, if the market is growing and brands are investing in sus sustainable sub-brands, that's where the growth is. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, 50% of the growth has been predicted to come from sustainable brands in the future. Then, you know, that's also a cost if you're not able to uh, access that. And then there's the investor side, which we already mentioned as well. So, goodness me, what what is the, the cost of not being sustainable? That's maybe the right question. Yes, it's the question of can, can you afford not to look at sustainable labeling? So actually exploring those types of solutions as well. Yeah. Um, and now we're coming a bit closer to the end and we have a couple of more things left. And then, of course, hopefully enough time for the Q&A as well. So um, could you sum up why it really is a must that we dive deeper into sustainable packaging and make make labels sustainable for acting against the climate crisis that we're in. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, hey, uh, packaging is a huge and really important uh, part of our daily lives. Uh, labels are integral to the packaging, the branding, the information flow, etc. And, uh, you know, labels really matter and can have an impact on the sustainability of your, your packaging going forward. But the fact is we're in a climate crisis, you know, going forward, business as usual is it's just not, we, we just cannot do that. So the point is to, you know, work within our LF's capacity and uh, we in the packaging value chain have to do our bit and really proactively do it. The consumer at the end of the day and society will decide where we head, uh, but we have a very important job to do there. We are on every shelf in every supermarket all around the world and uh, that alone gives us a massive responsibility. And you have the chance with your labels to actually market your sustainability in the supermarket right there with consumers so yes. you can show basically what you're doing already in sustainable packaging and definitely I agree it's a, it's a curve we need to flatten from sustainability side as well. I think we've talked uh, a lot about flattening the curve this year so this yeah. is definitely the curve that we want to flatten with uh, with everyday engagement that we do. It's really great stuff. I always get excited when we two dis discuss about these things, and I'm happy to kind of take take steps forward to take that sustainable action. And um, what I want to do now is just kind of shortly sum up from my side, um, because really we want to say that the time to act is now, because labels do matter, even though that they are they are sometimes forgotten in packaging because they're just a small part. They can actually cr uh, play in, in increasing a big part in what sustainability means for packaging. And um, we offer our Rough Attack uh, Smart Choice and Smart Circle solutions. We offer our different products under that range. And two of the ones that um, Bob uh, shared today is our Roughnecks, not Roughnecks Plus material, the world's first label material verified by the Carbon Trust to help mitigate climate change. And then we have our UPM Rough Attack Forest Film which is the labor material from 100% renewable resources. And I know that, especially for you, Bob, it has paid off for kind of banging on the door to develop those things for the past 10, 15 years to make sure that we finally have them available and can offer this to the market to really take very much positive climate action. 
And then on the right hand side, you see our uh, label life services. So basically on a day to day basis, we're working with, with you, our printers, and also you, the brands that use our labeling materials to, um, uh, to, yeah, to give you the most sustainable labels, but also to support you in calculating the footprints with our label life service, looking at CO2, water, uh, and energy. And uh, I believe now, Bob, uh, let's dive a bit deeper. We have uh, time left for a few questions, definitely. So I'd say if you're ready, I'd just start looking at the questions that have come in already, and uh, we'll start with those. Yeah, I think a answering questions is something that I have to do every day. So let's let's see what's there. Sounds good. Let me check. Okay. So one of, oh, this is an interesting one. Okay, the, one of the first questions actually um, isn't actually no packaging the best way to take positive climate action. What do you say about that? It's no packaging. Yeah. Okay. Interesting yes. question. Um, no packaging, I guess, is uh, not an option for most products on the shelf. Uh, I think. Uh, you know, and, and the reality is that packaging actually also has a really important role to play in protecting, for example, food. And, uh, you know, food waste is also known to be uh, a huge contributor to fossil carbon emissions and, uh, and, and climate change. And that's why, for example, food is actually one of the focus areas of uh, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, if I remember correctly. So. You know, I think uh, you know packaging has an important role, and you're not going to get rid of it. The point for us is to make it as sustainable as possible, and make the choices that are you know positive for climate in that. So, yeah, yeah. no packaging. And it comes back to three R's in a way, doesn't it? It's yeah. like re reduce as much as you can, um, make sure that what you have in the loop keep recycling that, so stay with the circular economy, and then use renewable raw materials so that you can actually keep that circle with raw materials going as well. So, yeah. absolutely valid. Um, and then, okay, just check to pick out the next right question. Okay, there's now something very specific on a product material. So um, something that we did mention today and that is now being asked because, for example, in France, um, it says there's a requirement in the near future for fru fruit and vegetable labeling to have a compostable label material and whether we offer that and uh, what you would say about compostable label materials. Uh, our aim is to uh, continue to grow the range of uh, Next Plus materials available, and that will include, you know, wine labels going forward. So yes, we are we are definitely working on that. Okay, so no solution right now, but working on it. And yes. as I understood it as well, it's like a niche application, like in France, the specific part now, so where it is actually required, but otherwise no focus on it. Yeah. Um, and let me see. It goes to the fact about Roughnecks Plus, and I think there's uh, possibly a printer that got excited about Carbon Trust uh, verified benefits for Roughnecks Plus. Yep. And they say that they produce mainly wine labels, and whether there's going to be benefits from Roughnecks Plus similarly also in other end-use areas outside of standard papers. Yeah, for sure. We will cover uh, Roughnecks Plus. We're, we're actually working with all the end-use segments now to identify where it's possible to take these kind of products which have very quantified uh, carbon benefits to them so you know whether it's food whether it's wine whether it's pharma uh, even tire labeling going forward you know tires are very much in the focus of uh, the climate change discussion so I think all labels in the future we you know we'll somehow be able to tell this story for okay perfect so it comes to the it comes back to my question about the figures we're gonna have figures available for more labels in the, in the future as well yeah and then now Okay, this is my type of question. This is now also about the figures itself. So about the life cycle assessment tool, this uh, label life. Can you calculate footprints for all of your products for this? Actually, that's a great question. And uh, I think we have thousands of products. So we haven't done LCA calculations for everything. However, we can do that. And, uh, you know, the point is that if a customer uh, really needs to understand the footprint of their label, then we will do that. Uh, so we have the capability to do that. We've we, we've modelled uh, more than 900 products today. Uh, it's a unique service, and uh, you know we can definitely do tailored calculations for for any of the other, let's say, more special uh, products going forward. No problem at all. 
Okay, great to hear. And then something that I want to stress on that, because it's like we can, we model our own products. So we look at raw materials production and everything on our side, but we actually collaborate also with customers and end users together to model their own processes, their own printing and on label dispensing processes so that you can really have a full calculation cradle to gate to the complete site, even then including also whether at the end of uh, the life cycle it goes to incineration or recycling or even landfill in some places still. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's really a very uh, powerful tool when you come to this tailored calculations where we can be very specific in the needs of every case. Yep. Um, okay, this is all the questions that have popped up on my, on my sheet here. So technically we have a bit of time left, but I don't have any questions here. So um, I would say if there's any more questions coming in that are just not popping up on my screen for now, we will definitely answer those um, after the webinar. So we will get back to you. And then I think the first thing I want to do is uh, say uh, thank you to you, Bob, for your insights and expertise to be here today. Thank you. And, my pleasure. And especially, of course, as well, a thank you to everyone who's listening today. Um, thank you for attending. It was a pleasure and exciting actually to be here. And uh, I just want to make sure that you all know what you can do next. So the first part, of course, Bob and I are here for you. If there are any questions you want to dive deeper in, feel free to get in touch with us. And then, of course, if you have a, a local contact already from sales, for example, for your own business, feel free to get in touch with them. They also know how to get in touch with us. So we're happy to support. Check out our website, follow us on social media. So there's plenty of uh, ways how to get in touch with us. And uh, we're happy to, to support you in your own sustainability journey and to give you even more information to learn to speak sustainability, how you can talk to your own customers in that sense as well. And then the last important thing before actually closing is uh, please stay tuned for our next webinar. We talked about the first part of our product portfolio, the smart choice, specifically reduce and renew today. But we're going to cover uh, the circular economy in our next webinar in November 2020. And uh, we'll advertise that in uh, in the near future or uh, I guess uh, in like mid end of October. But feel free to stay tuned and uh, we will we'll hope actually to see you there for our second webinar to take you on the journey with the circular economy as well. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely day and stay safe.